They've gone. Where? The airport. You heard the airport. The airport? every faith in the Republic, except when the one plane of its national airline is about to take off. We could have gone by boat, as usual. I still don't know why you're in such a hurry. It's my impersonation of a high-powered administrator. Whatever the reason, Englishmen are hard to find, especially when you're married to them. Good morning, Senora Faversham, Henry. Hello, Colonel. You nearly missed your plane. How very pleasant to see you. Champagne? Thank you. And what pressing business brings you away from the country? I was about to ask you the same. As the Republic's chief of security, I thought you knew everything. <laughs> Nearly everything, Henry. But even the president didn't know that you were leaving. Why should that matter? Surely there is a reason for this journey. Well, my work has never been as definite as yours. Perhaps I don't need a reason. And you, Felipe? Perhaps the same. And I've known you for 20 years. And I've never known you do anything without a reason. Thank you, Henry. I'm sure a lot of people would agree to that. Most of them with bullets in the back of the head. Most of them traitors. Senor Henry Faversham, in the name of the Republic, I'm placing you under arrest. Henry, what is this? Ask him. Ask him yourself. What is this lunacy? And remember who you're talking to. I do, Senora, with respect. What is the charge? For the embezzlement of a half a million pesos, gold. That's ridiculous. From the public works office he administers. Henry, tell this indio. Tell him what? He knows his job, a hunter of men, with his tame leopard. It's true? Sorry. Oh, no. Not you. Why? I served the president for nearly 20 years. I didn't see any sign of a pension, so I thought I'd organize one. I don't believe you. I'm sure Colonel Garcia has the necessary proof. No. Not you. No one could corrupt you. I shall require your passport, Henry, and the papers transferring this gold to Switzerland. Now! You're a security man, Garcia, which means you're not a gambler. You work best in the dark, judge and jury. You'll be given a trial. And then a formal execution, as a token of respect for long service. Now, you, of all people, know the choice I have. This grenade or a firing squad. You will now toddle off to your friend, the pilot, and tell him we are diverting to Barada. <laughs> no, no, Henry. <laughs> I know you. 
You wouldn't think of sacrificing your wife and innocent people? Uh, nobody thought I'd embezzle half a million pesos, either. Light plane at Barada. I can't go with you, Henry. Not now. No, my dear. I didn't for one minute think that you could. For lunch, Henry. And thank you for the advice. Yes, McGill's your best bet. I believe he's honest, provided you pay him enough. Oh, well, there's no difficulty there. On the other hand, I could pull the odd string, get the department to second a couple of chips. Well, that would mean uh, revealing details. No offense, Granger, and I'm very grateful, but I have no intention whatsoever of supplying anyone with details. Henry, I've no wish to pry, but have you really? Yes, yes. I've looted the entire treasury of the Republic, and I'm just off to get myself a false beard. I'm Peter Pan. <laughs> Goodbye, Granger. Goodbye, Henry. Thank you. I just don't get it. Well, it's really very simple. I have acquired a quarter of a million pounds in gold pesos from a certain Central American Republic, and I should like to enlist your services for a few days. And wouldn't that make me an accomplice? My dear fellow, not at all. I'm surprised you should even suggest it. I have a long-standing aversion to handcuffs. You will be required to do nothing illegal. I give you my word. Mr. Faversham, I talked to uh, Sir Charles Granger about you, and I read the reference books, and I feel I know you a bit. Now, why do you want me to believe that you took off with that money from a republic you spent 20 years of your life developing? Your undoubted powers of interrogation do not form part of this contract, McGill. I've been perfectly honest with you. Have you? That's the way I do business. Now, what's all this really about? McGill, you must trust me. I've told you all I can. What about extradition? No agreements exist. Legally, no one can lay a finger on me in London. Unless, of course, I were foolish enough to accept an invitation to the embassy. So what do you want me to do, just beat off unwanted invitations? Not at all, I've already told you. Any involvement compromising you would be most improper. Now, what do you say? That depends on what you want me to do. All I want you to do is to keep an eye on me and operate a few gadgets. Now, what kind of gadgets? I would like you to wire this room to record all conversations. I would also like a camera installed to cover events at a given time. And that's it? That's it. This ought to cover the equipment. And McGill, whatever happens, you are not to interfere. I am surprised at your insistence on coming along, Signora. Not my insistence, the President's. So you tell me. But why should you want any part in bringing your husband to justice? To trial to trial, of course. There are other reasons why you are helping. None that concern you, except the President's request. Senora, we may have to spend some weeks together. Don't forget that your husband and I were once friends. You worked with him. And successfully. He taught me a great deal. It might help if you'd remember that. 
Then tell me why he did it, Garcia. Why? Impulse. You saw the books, the transfers. Botched. A night's work done in a hurry. That explains how, not why. All over the country one can see 20 years of his life. Roads and bridges and schools. Millions of pesos through his hands. And then he realized it and stole a quarter of a million pounds. I have estates worth that. I would have given them to him. He wouldn't have accepted them from you. For Brutus is an honorable man. Will you be able to find him? Oh, yes. He'll be in London going quietly about his usual routine. Lunch at his club with friends, cricket at Lord's, some golf at Sunningdale, racing, some gambling. Englishmen are held together by habits. It's one of the things that makes them comfortable to live with. Can you get him to the embassy? That's where we want him. No. That is something you will have to do for yourself. Ah, there we are. The recorders, the cameras, and everything's just a little too big, but I didn't have any choice. Just wish I knew how smart I was going to have to be here. And the place will probably be searched by experts, I told you that. Hope you're as good as they are. Well, don't worry. I've had about the best education in the world for this business. In fact, when I think of the bright future it's giving me, I just want to explode. Ah, see? Americans aren't so conservative. I brought two of everything. And you dummies will probably find one of each and be happy. Mm, I'm sure you'll do your best. Hello? I want to inquire about today's flight arrivals from Central America, please. Yes, certainly. Yeah, that'll be the one. Flight 736. Landed two hours ago. Thank you. Can you tell me, please, if a Colonel Felipe Garcia was among the passengers? Garcia. Chief of security in the Republic. Oh, for a man on the run, you don't move very fast, do you? Well, I don't really have much practice. Well, this is the one they'll probably find in the orange. Do a little better job on the others. Yes, well, I'll leave you to it. Perhaps you'll be good enough to knock on my door about nine in case I doze off, would you? Why, is that when everything happens? My dear fellow, that's when I go out to dinner. your back, Burro. Not mine. Where is the ambassador? Your Excellency? Carla, my dear. How nice to see you. Guzman. My dear, I could only wish that the circumstances for your being here were happier. Come this way, please. I will announce you to the ambassador. Julio is mute, not deaf, nor helpless. And when you use Indio as insult, you insult us both. Garcia! 
You're not at Capulco prison now. No, Ambassador. At Capulco, they have better manners. And to what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? You are to close the embassy for the next three days. All staff living in, including yourself, will be sent away. On whose authority? The President's. Excuse me. For what reason? None that you need know. Do as he asks, Ambassador. It's necessary. At your request, not his. The President. I knew your family. I was at your christening, your first communion, your wedding. I know the blood you come from. What are you doing in this? Working with an Indio hangman and a puller of fingernails. He's a loyal servant of the Republic. So is every peon who clears garbage. The President trusts Garcia. You and I have to do the same. Please. Very well. I will instruct my staff. The embassy is yours. And Garcia's. I see. All right, thank you. And it doesn't make sense. Faversham's behaving like a man on vacation. He's even taken the same service apartment. Because he's an amateur. Take a Tullio, watch him, check his apartment, telephone me. And Guzman, the girl. Keep her out of the way if necessary. Here you up. It's about nine o'clock. Coming. Now, which books contain the hidden cameras? I haven't the slightest idea. Well, most people are right-handed, and most people begin searching just below eye level, so they'll probably find that one. This is the goodie, and I'll set it to start just when the lights go on, okay? Splendid. Now, then, after dinner, I should be going on to Blandford's. I found an evening at the table was extremely relaxing. Mm, there you do. Perhaps you'll be good enough to join me at Blandford's about midnight? Well, I'll wait for you outside. I shall I have the car sent back? No, thanks. I don't enjoy being conspicuous as much as you do. Now, you be careful. Yeah. Now's the time for all good men to listen. Listen to what? Time for all good men to listen. I'm so sorry. I'm, I must have mistaken the number. I'm new here. I do beg your pardon, Mr. Faversham. Uh, you might vouch for him, Mr. Pelican. Really? 
Garcia. Oh, very good, sir. I'll sign the book later. Oh, Garcia, 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 Don't play your English games with me, Henry. No game, Felipe. This is a club, and rules are meant to be kept. Take a turn. Petrige, monsieur. You weren't difficult to find. Your routine is well known. I wasn't hiding. You can't extradite me. I could expose you. No, you won't do that either. If you expose me, you destroy the president. His prestige is based on public works and non-corruption. Then you admit corruption. I admit a degree of self-help. 29, no impéripes, rien du monde. You're not lucky tonight. Petrus, monsieur. Luck has nothing to do with my business. I want you, Henry, and I want the money. Come back to the Republic. I prefer London. You're not winning, Felipe. Henry, we are the president's right and left arms. I've cut myself off. You acted on impulse. That can be forgiven. Now come back and I'll take you back. I'm not going back. And I can prove it. A small private bet. I'll put the money on the next spin of the wheel, or dice or cards. You versus me. In my profession, I don't gamble. And for money, anyway. I think it'd be a little safer for you if you spent the night in the hotel. No, thank you. Service is not what it used to be. Look, you can't go to your place. It's staked out. They're crawling out of the woodwork there. Have you arranged all your equipment? Yeah, I did that. Oh, that's settled, hasn't it? Then I'd better go in first and clear out all your visitors. If I have visitors, I may be expecting them sooner or later. Mr. Ferguson, don't you understand? You're holding a hot quarter of a million pounds. Now, any punk in town can try to beat you for it. You haven't got a legal say in the world. You take your work too seriously, McGill. Well, that's what you're paying me for. I'll thank you for your concern, nevertheless. Your job is to watch, record, report. I want you to drop me off and then go on to my club. The porter there has a small parcel for you. It may help to clear things up. Good night, McGill. Very quiet. I have every intention of so doing. It's after midnight. Your room was most efficiently bucked. Took some time to find. Congratulations, Guzman. I always suspected a trace of the ferret in you. I should like to know why. How should I know? Ask whoever put it there. You shouldn't be here, you know. The president asked me to come. He shouldn't have done that. It was wrong and unnecessary. I wanted to know why. Why you, of all people, turned thief. You're demanding an explanation? Yes. All right. 
I was sick of feeding my blood and energy to a country that wasn't mine, sick of speaking a language that wasn't mine, sick of the greasy handshakes of liars and politicians. You could have left with honor. There was no reason to betray everything. Allow me my one gesture of lunacy. I've been sane and responsible all my life. You're still evading the question. Why? It was there, it was easy. It seemed worth anything I might have to give up. Have you seen the old men in the seaside hotels eking out half ounces of tobacco, counting their pennies, dead ten years before they're buried? I wouldn't have let that happen to you. Not now, no, but in 15, 20 years' time. If I begin to slobber and you can smell old age every time you enter a room where I've been. Oh, no, no. Go home, darling. And when you see the president, tell him he shouldn't have sent you. Now, Henry, we place all the chips on the table. Don't wait for me, I'll take a cat. Right, sir. You have stolen a great deal of money intended for the good of the Republic. Yes or no? Yes. You will now give me the number of the Swiss bank account where the money is placed, and you will sign this transfer form. If, and I say, if I'm brought to trial, I might do as you ask, as it is your wasting breath. I see this form is made out to your name. As a representative of the Republic. Well, then I can wait until the trial. It's rather a lot of money. Which must be seen to be recovered before you come to trial. Well, then why not transfer it in the President's name? Do your own stealing, Garcia. I had to. I lack the education. As has often been pointed out, I am half Indian. I scrabble for food on dirt floors with the chickens. I remember, I taught you to read. I taught you to use a knife and fork. But then because of that, do as I ask. Sign. And the money becomes yours? No, Felipe, I gave up too much for it. If I have to, I can force you to sign. Please, don't make me do that. Well, that's as good an admission as any of how desperate you are for this money. You're one of the things we made, the President and I. Every day I look down at my shiny boots instead of my bare feet, and I remember that. I also remember that you made me for your own purposes. I've served all the time that I owe you. I see. Will you put the president's name on that form and I'll sign it? No. The president will have to trust me. He trusted me once. Where did that get him? Sign. No. Henry. I can buy an army with this money. I can buy all the guns and ammunition. And that is all I need because the people are already mine, not yours. Not us soft-handed presidents who learned all about poverty from books at an American law school. Mine, <coughs> Felipe Garcia's. It's a big ambition. Big enough to kill you for, if I must. Couldn't speed it up there a little bit, could you? McGee, did you say your name was? No, McGill, McGill. M-C-G-I-L-L. -L. Well, I did hear for somebody called McGee. Nobody of that name a member of this club. It's not a letter, it's a small parcel. Why, I, I remember Mr. Faversham telling me no. Um, I... Yeah, that's it. Uh, how do I know you're who you say you are? You're not a member here. I swear on who I say I am. Here's my passport. You're American, are you? I thought you didn't sound Scots. <laughs> An army of 50,000 men waiting for guns. With you as its leader? By right. A self-confessed traitor? As against a self-confessed thief. Five years meticulous planning, not a night's frantic embezzlement. I have all the dossiers. 
I know all the weak spots, all the diehards, all the opportunists. Like Goodsman? Like Goodsman. Sign, Henry. No. Henry. The president is like my own father. But I am prepared to slit his throat for a country that belongs by right to me. So surely I am prepared to slit yours. But you will sign first. Don't turn him loose on me, Garcia. If you want anything from me, get it yourself. As between equals. <laughs> <laughs> but I am not your equal, nor the president's. I never have been. This gives me one advantage. I don't have to play by your code. I am a torturer. And I have repeated this pattern a thousand times, Henry. You will sign. Yes, you will. All we need is time. And we have plenty of time at the embassy. I'm sorry to disappoint you, McGill, but I'm not really an embezzler. The money was stolen, yes, but with the President's full knowledge and approval. It was bait for a traitor, and we shall know now whether that traitor was Felipe Garcia. Now, if your work was efficient, and I've no doubt it was, there should be sufficient evidence on both tape and film. It may all seem unnecessarily complicated, but you must remember that the President has trusted Garcia implicitly for 20 years. An irresistible bait was needed. I'm fond of the Republic. I've done a good deal of work there, and I wouldn't want Garcia to ruin it. You will now cable or telephone my wife and ask her to come to London to collect the tapes. She will deliver them, since I may not be in a position to make the delivery myself. The manager of the Haberdashers Bank in Brook Street is holding a sum of money from my private account in payment for your services. And please accept my thanks.
intention of so doing, it's after midnight. Yes or no? Yes. You will now give me the number of the Swiss bank account where the money is placed, and you will sign this... Well, then why not transfer it in the President's name? Do your own stealing, Garcia. I had to. I can buy an army with this money. I can buy all the guns and ammunition, and that is all I need. I am a torturer. Catulio and I have repeated this pattern a thousand times, Henry. You will sign. Yes, you will. That is fine. What are you doing here? I'm working here. Who are you and what are you doing here? Who's paying you? Whoever he is, he's not paying me to tell people about it. I have a right to ask. This is my husband's apartment. Ah. Then you're Mrs. Farisham. Stay where you are. I'm working for your husband, ma'am. He hired me. My name's McGill. To do what? To help him. Now, you better put that gun away, because it's pointing in the wrong direction. I don't believe you. Listen. I can buy an army with this money. I can buy all the guns and ammunition. And that is all I need. The people are already mine. I'll play the rest for you. You better sit down. You've always been an obstinate man. I've never known you to be foolish as well. If only a, a foolish man would take you from the gutter. You taught me about progress, and now you're trying to stand in its way. Progress? You don't make progress with a carrot. How else do you move an obstinate man? Don't you understand? The president has used you for years as he's used me. Why make any more sacrifices? You've forgotten a lot about me. <laughs> Honor, integrity, and the rest of your cold shower nonsense. They're dead, even here. And they've never been alive in countries like mine. When a man has to watch his children starve and rot during the bad season, he can't afford principles like yours. Sign the form. No. I'm, if I'm wrong, let me be wrong my, my own way. You shouldn't have meddled, Henry. It's not your country, not your cause. And another man sits in a palace and lets you die by inches. What sort of man is it can do this? How much proof does he need that you can be trusted? Sign the form, Henry. I beg of you. Sorry. I can't. My word. I don't have to play by your code. I am a torturer. No! He said he was guilty and told me to go home. But I found I couldn't leave him, whatever he'd done. So I went to the embassy. It, it was dark, and, and there was no one there, so I came back here and... Where was the ambassador in his stand? Gone. He didn't want to go, but I persuaded him. For the president, I persuaded him. Mrs. Faversham, your husband and Garcia are in that embassy now. We have to go to the police. They can't do anything. And I know your husband doesn't want him involved. Because he wants to protect the reputation of my country. I've betrayed him. 
I, I kept on talking about honour and integrity. And I should have just loved him and trusted him. Now give me those tapes. We're going to the police. Listen. Please. That embassy is diplomatic territory. Now the police couldn't... They might, it might take them a week to get a, a warrant to get in there. They may not get in there at all. Your husband might be dead by then. <laughs> believe me. Believe me. <laughs> Just trust me. Let's do it my way. signed? No. But soon. It's the girl that worries me. No need. She's on the plane now, weeping. Hmm? I wish I was so sure. Faversham. Faversham. Listen to me. By tonight you could be dead. But that won't stop me. You have a wife, a citizen of the Republic and your legal heir. She'll sign. I don't think she'll have your stubbornness or your principles. You're being given a chance to save your life. Take it. Whoa. Okay, you guys are straight on what you have to do. Yeah, Governor, we do it every day. By the way, how did you locate us? The Yellow Pages. Oh, advertising must pay off. What do we do? The embassy is closed. We're declaring a national holiday. Get rid of them. What if it's the police? It won't be. They'll need a special warrant. Put him in the other room. I came to get Faversham. But there's no one of that name here. The embassy is closed. You tell Garcia that I know Faversham's in here. You're and I quite came to get wrong, him. senor. Please go away. <laughs> Yes, I understand. But please leave word for him to contact me at the yard at his first opportunity, because it's very urgent. All right, goodbye. Well? Sir Charles Granger spent last night in Manchester. His flight isn't due in for over an hour. I keep telling you, he knows me. He knows my husband. Yes, ma'am. It's unfortunate that you're not carrying your passport. You keep me here waiting, asking stupid questions, checking on me. Don't you understand me? They are torturing him. We're doing the best we can, madam, but you must remember it's 5.30 in the morning and your story is unusual. It's true. In any event, we can't go bursting into an embassy without legal authority. Oh, get me your superior. As I've already told you, madam. Yes? Oh, thank you. Get a car. What? I'm very sorry, Mrs. Faversham, but I had to be certain. Now, come along. I told you I want to see Faversham. I find your repeated requests not only impossible, <clears throat> but boring. Listen, punk. I know he's here. I know why he's here, and I know why you want that money. You're lying. No, I'm not. I can prove it. That presupposes you'll be given the chance. You're a dead man. You should be praying. Hmm. What have you done with him? Senor Faversham? He's an old friend of mine. 
If he felt unwell, he'd contact the embassy. He'd be welcome here, and it... If he had a heart attack, what better or more logical place for him to die than on territory of the country of his adoption, a country where he spent his life and skills, hmm? Yeah, well, I have a funny feeling I'm going to die of that kind of heart attack, too. I wouldn't rule out that possibility, senor. Mm -hmm. Just stay in the car for a moment, Mr. Pepsi. Yes? I'm a police officer, sir. I'm sorry to disturb you at this hour. Your name? That's Garcia! Sir. Tell him we've come I'll for my fine. husband! Detective Inspector Hedley, sir. That's all right, madam. It's all right. Please, uh, madam, leave it to the inspector. This lady has a complaint to make, sir. She says she has good reason to believe that her husband may be... Not maybe is going and look for him. I know this lady, inspector. Her husband has left her and she believes we're hiding him here. She should see a doctor. McGill. Ask him about McGill. And I've never known of anybody named McGill. I know my husband's in there. Now, come on. Now, come on. I told you, Mrs. Fletcher, this embassy is diplomatic territory and I need more authority. What about Sir Charles? Yes, well, they're picking him up at London Airport now. He'll be here soon. And I've contacted the Foreign Secretary as well. They're killing my husband. I'm sorry, but I need more substantiation. I need something. Is there nothing you can do? Just wait. Now, come along. That was a police in Faversham's wife. They've gone away? Of course. No policeman is going to risk a diplomatic incident. But they get a special warrant. By that time, both Faversham and this American will be dead. Yeah, that's pretty cheap where you come from. Oh, right? yes. And when you stepped off that street, American, you stepped into my country. Well, not all the way, punk. You just look outside that window. You see that? An ineffectual policeman of a shabby workman's truck. That's right. And they're going to prove you guilty of treason, conspiracy, torture. Right. Away we go. Full on. Well, if he wants to wait the whole street, that's his lookout. I can buy my guns and ammunition. And that is all I need. Because as the people are already in my job, not a soft hand and it has been. So get two squad cars here at once. Mine! Fade! 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 That rubbish is not admissible as evidence. Not in this country, and not in my country either, but it is in yours, buddy. And I got some pretty good film to go with it, too. Now, I want to see Faversham. In exchange. Where is he? He's dead. He died uselessly then, for a country and a cause not his own, for a man that used him as he used everybody else. Now, what's your price for the tapes and the film? What do you want? You, Garcia, you!